Right, welcome everyone. Today's video is on the subject of the nervous system and we're going to be looking at it uh, on this tape from the um, point of view of its anatomy and physiology. We're going to start at a fairly basic level and then, and then work up. We'll be drawing a few pictures along the way and as usual you'll need to draw your own picture and label it yourself and build it up as we go along to get a picture of what we're talking about. Now the first thing we're going to look at the nervous system is, 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 a, is a very brief overview and we're going to divide it into two sections. The first is called the central nervous system and the second is called the peripheral nervous system. All of the nervous system in the body can be divided into one of these two categories. The central nervous system comprises the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system comprises all of the rest. So central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, Peripheral nervous system, all other nervous tissue. So central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Now the normal way to start learning about the nervous system is to learn about individual nerve cells. Individual nerve cells are referred to as neurons. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a picture of a neuron. Now neuron means a nerve cell and the one we're going to look at first is going to be a nerve cell which carries messages from the central nervous system out to the peripheral nervous system. These uh, neurons transmit messages for movement, therefore they're called motor neurons. So we're actually going to be drawing a motor neuron. A motor neuron. And the first thing to draw is a, a cell body. And it's a bit of a strange shape because there's nerve impulse, nerve fibres going into it. But there's one longer fibre going out from it. This part is referred to as the cell body because that's what it is. It's the main part of the cell. And just as with any cell, it contains a nucleus. It contains a cytoplasm. And it contains granular bits in the cytoplasm, which are the cell organelles. But traditionally, Nerve cells, the granules in nerve cell cytoplasm is referred to as Nissel's granules. Nissel after the person who first identified them, traditionally referred to as Nissel's granules. But in every way it is an ordinary cell. Now, there's some nerve fibres here which go into the cell. They're carrying messages into the cell, towards the cell body. And any nerve fibre which carries information towards the cell body is referred to as a dendrite. So dendrites are a type of nerve fibre which carry messages towards the cell body. That is how we define a dendrite. Now 
Now here, I've drawn a thicker fibre leading away from the cell body, and any fibre which leads away from the cell body we refer to as an axon. So this is an axon. And you notice that the axon is long and thin. Because in some motor neurons, the axons can be about a metre long. If you think about it, they're carrying information from the spinal cord down to your big toe. Or from your spinal cord, or, or near your spinal cord, to your fingers. So the, the, the fibres need to be long and thin. The axons are long and thin. I'll just uh, maybe draw onto this one a bit. Long, thin axons. Now, as we're going to see later on, nervous impulses are in fact electrical in nature. And just as with any electrical wire, if it's not insulated, then you'll get cross circuits and all sorts of other shorting out problems. So in exactly the same way, nerve fibres are insulated. They have an insulating coat round about them. So let's draw on now the insulating coat round about the axon. And this occurs in sections with gaps in between it. And in fact, each one of these wraps round about the uh, axon is a type of cell. And the sort of cell the, the name given to this sort of cell is a Schwann cell. Again, after the person who first identified them. So this is an individual Schwann cell here, wrapped around about the axon. Another individual Schwann cell here. Another one here and these surround the axon. They insulate the axon and keep the electrical current in the axon. As well as that, they also form a physical protection for the axon. The Schwann cells are very fatty in nature, and incidentally that's why nerve fibres look white, because of the fatty sheath which is round about them. So they physically protect the axon. So they insulate the axon, they physically protect the axon, and the third thing they do is that they nourish the axon. They supply nutrients to the axon. So very important that we have these Schwann cells surrounding the axon. Insulation, protection, what did I say the third one was? Insulation, protection, nourishment. Insulation, protection, and nourishment. And these cells comprise a sheath called the myelin sheath. So the myelin sheath surrounds the axon. The myelin sheath is made up of Schwann cells. Now, you notice we've left gaps in between the uh, Schwann cells, the small gaps here. Now, physiologically, these gaps are very important, and they're given a specific name. Again, it relates, uh, you could argue, unfortunately, to the person that first discovered them, because it means you've got to learn a lot of names. But they're referred to as the nodes of Rambia. the nodes of Rambia.